and that's right under Edit Mesh, Append Polygon Tool. So what this will do is, if you click on an open edge like this, and then click on another one, it's going to build a polygon face across it, and it won't actually complete until you hit Enter. So I'm just going to do that. we go. But we're still not quite done yet. Um, you can see the inside is a circle, but the outside is kind of square still. Let's bring this down a little bit. And what I'm going to do is bevel the edges so they hold, and not bevel these inside edges, because we don't really want those to be bevel. We want them to average out. All the same, I don't really want it to be smooth along the corner here. So I'm going to go ahead and bevel this edge. And leave these corners as they are. Okay, so let's see what we're looking at here. So we're pretty close already. Um, this hole is a little bit too big here, so let me just grab those inside faces and scale it along those two axes. And then if you notice, we've got the, a bit of a angle here, like this, and it sort of smooths out. So we can do something like this, where we grab these bottom vertices, and we'll use a new tool now called the Lattice Tool. I've got mine on a hotkey, but where you'll find it is if you go to Create Deformers, Lattice. And what that's done is it's created this little box, and if you go to the components of that box, you'll see Lattice Point. And if you watch, it'll become pretty clear what it does. So, whatever you create inside your lattice, or I should say, uh, whatever lattice points you create will then influence the points you've selected when you created that lattice. It's basically being able to control more points with fewer points. And when you delete history, that box will go away. Okay. Now let's just bring that down to create that bit of an arc that we have in the artwork there. Okay, so does that look good? Let's see. Looks pretty good from here. And looks like the hole could be a little bit lower, or rather, that this could be a little bit higher. Okay, so let's duplicate this, move it over here. I'm going to rotate it 180. And then one more for this piece. I'll rotate it 90 degrees. And just sort of eyeball it, get it in the middle. And this fire hydrant is looking pretty finished to me. I always tell people that want to learn how to do 3D modeling that a fire hydrant is a pretty good thing to learn to do because you really have to know a lot of different things about modeling to do it. So we've covered how to make features and surfaces like this. We've covered how to attach different shapes to one another 
and how to create a nice uh, you know ring a nice smooth connection point with our different uh, geometry cutting tools and so forth um, you know creating kind of a complex shape like this and uh, up here especially duplicating things around so there's a lot that goes into it last thing we can do to this if we want to take it just a little bit further is to add some imperfections um, what makes this look like a real fire hydrant because it is a real fire hydrant are all the things that are not symmetrical and not completely perfect um, you've got this welders seam right here and uh, you know some scratch on the paint and some signs of use um, it's not a perfect thing you know there's a couple more smaller details we could have modeled like this little valve or whatever this thing is but um, let's go ahead and add some imperfections to this like it's seen a couple fires and I'd like to use the um, relax brush or something like this um, sometimes what I'll do is I'll go in here and just kind of mess up some of these edges that might be a little bit too much Maybe we'll just use this. Translate some vertices around. Just to break up this edge so that it's not completely perfect all the way around. You can see it's got a little bit of a shine right there now. And these are very small things, but If we want to make some scratches on the body of this thing, we'll probably have to divide it at least once, uh, which is something that I was thinking we wouldn't do, but let's try doing it now. So I'm just going to go and use my hotkey for smoothing. And now we can do something like this, where we bring a series of edges to close together. You push this in and kind of simulate like a scratch or something like this on the surface. Or maybe a dent. We could be pretty ambitious and actually add like a real big dent in here, like somebody crashed their car into it. Let's see, it's getting my tool settings here. It's kind of fun to do. You, know, you can do something like deleting one of these. The fireman forgot to put that one back on. Even doing something like this where we like just rotate this a little bit. Got put back on in a hurry. Now the threading is all screwed up. And it might be kind of cool to add a scratch here or a dent. The tricky thing about doing something like this is that as I slide these edges around, I'm losing volume on that cylindrical surface. So maybe that's not such a hot idea. I could do it if I kept dividing this up until I had enough geometry to keep that shape, but I don't want to make this too heavy. So maybe I'll forget about this one. But anyway, you get the idea we could bang this thing up a little bit more and make it more interesting. Or if you want to have fun, 
you can really go crazy with it. Oops. Oh. <laughs> I'm losing some of my geometry because my uh, transforms aren't frozen on this. So there you go. Old fire hydrant and new fire hydrant. Uh, one more quick thing if you want to add some color to this. Not too difficult to do. We just need to go into the rendering editors, hypershade. And what I would do is I'd create a blend. Double click the blend to bring up the attributes. Then just choose a color, probably red or yellow. Um, I like to give it a little specular color. Right now the highlight's going to be white. But we can give that a little bit of a tone too. Just a hint of yellow maybe. And then you just need to grab all your pieces of geometry and assign it. So right click on the shader, assign material to selection. And maybe that's too much specularity. You can dial that back. Just grab the specular color here. Slide it back down until you get something more reasonable. This is pretty bright red. Shift it a little bit towards the orange. So, let me smooth this all up. There you have it. Hope you've had fun watching, and uh, good luck with your own fire hydrant. Can't wait to see it.